The boss would not allow me to take leave. I thought that maybe, hmm, if I acted crazy, he would tell me to take a few days off. So I got to thinking about it, so, so I said, hmm, okay. I hung upside down from the ceiling and made funny noises. Well, my co-worker, who's blonde, now you blonde ladies, don't get mad at me, who's blonde, asked me what I was doing. I told her that I was pretending to be a light bulb so that the boss might think I was crazy and give me a few days off. A few minutes later, the boss came into my office and he asked, What on earth are you doing? I told him I was a light bulb. He said, You are clearly stressed out. Go home and recuperate for a couple of days. I jumped down and I started walking out of the office. But when my co-worker, the blonde, she followed me. And the boss looked at her and he said, And where do you think you're going? She said, I'm going home too. I can't work in the dark. We all have stressful moments. We all have hard times in our life that we don't know what the next minute is going to bring and how, to, how we're going to go about those things. I've told this before here. This is a story that I've told here before, and I'll be short with this as quick as I can. But some of you have not heard this, and I want to tell it again. I, I, this is something I've used at several seminars, and, and my goodness, it, it's a story about... This well-known speaker, uh, he, he was doing a seminar, and as he was doing a seminar, he held up a $20 bill. That's a real $20 bill. He held up a $20 bill in the room of uh, around 200 people. He asked, who would like to have this $20 bill? Well, as you may notice, the uh, hands started going up. And, and I'm going to give this to somebody in here that would like a $20 bill. And I don't know who that person might be. Oh, yes, I see somebody right here uh, that wants this $20 bill. Who would it be? Ah, yes, this is the young lady that would want this $20 bill. She's grinning from ear to ear. You'd like to have this, right? That would be good. Well, wait a minute. What if I do this? What if I wide it up? You still want it? What if I throw it down on the floor? You still want it? What if I walk on it? You still want it? What if I kick it around? You still want that $20 bill? She's still nodding her head. No matter what I did to that $20 bill, I, it's wadded up. It's wadded up. It's walked on. It's stepped on. It's kicked around. It's knocked around. Kind of like us in life sometimes, you know? But regardless what I did to that $20 bill, it's still worth $20 i got to bend over and pick it up twice. That's what's hard. So I pull this open, and after all of this trauma, and it's even been torn, you still want it. So I want to give you that $20 bill. And as I give you that $20 bill, I want you to realize in your life you're going to be walked on, you're going to be kicked around, you're going to be stepped on, you're going to be pushed around. But I want to tell you something. You're still valuable in the eyes of God. In your life, you're going to have struggles. In your life, there will be some troubles, Christian people. But listen, here is the key and the ticket. You're a Christian. You have got something that the world that's living in darkness does not have. You've got Jesus Christ living inside of your heart. And when Jesus makes residence in your heart, it makes all the difference in the world because you've got Him 24-7 regardless of what's going on. You can talk to Him about what's ailing you or hurting you regardless if you've been kicked around, stepped on, walked on, kicked, uh, or whatever. God says you are valuable in the eyes of the Lord. Turn with me, if you will, in Psalms 90 and the 12th verse. Psalms 90 and the 12th verse. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now let's go to Matthew, the 6th chapter, and the 33rd verse. Some of you just got to Matthew. To Psalms. I'm rushing you. Know, I'm sorry. Matthew, the 6th chapter and the 33rd verse. But seek. King James says, seek ye first. I like that. I like that ring, you know. Seek ye first. Not second, not third, not fourth. But seek first. His kingdom. Whose kingdom? Ronnie's kingdom? 
Billy Graham's kingdom, Mike's kingdom, Raymond's kingdom? No, his kingdom. It's God's kingdom. All we are are messengers. But I want you to know that we seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And then it says if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, it says, and all these things will be added or given to you as well. What are these things we're talking about? I'm talking about blessings, y'all. I'm talking about blessings that God wants to pour out and He has stored up right now in abundance that He wants to pour out. But there is so much darkness around some of you that He can't find you. And you see what comes with darkness? Sin. Sin. Not putting Christ where He belongs at first in, in your life. Now, whether you're young or old, six or 60, healthy and wealthy, puny or poor, you can make the rest of your life the best of your life. Oh, I think you can summarize what Jesus said here in three words. First things first. Now, I know that sounds simple, but I want to tell you that if you, beginning today, would consciously, continuously, uh, constantly, and consistently put first things first, it would absolutely transform your life. The formula for how to do just that is found in this tremendous statement from the lips of our Lord. We've got to set our priorities. What is your priorities today? What is your priorities in life? Last two, about three or four weeks ago in my sermon, I held up a piece of paper and I put a dot on it. I've used this so many times since then. But as I put that little dot on it, that in the center of the page, I held it up and I said, what do you see? And most of you said, a little black dot. But folks, here's my problem here today. The church is focusing. Christian people, hang with me now. I'm going to walk on some toes. I'm going to get on my own. But I want to tell you something today. We are focusing on the little black dot more than we are all of this stuff that's around it. This is a little black dot, but look what's all around it. There's more around it that's not a black dot, but we see the black dot in our life first. In a prayer meeting that I had last week, I was in the prayer meeting and I was talking about this and a guy was really hurting. He was just really having a hard time with his life and finances and different things. And I began to talk about this little black dot. As I began to talk about that, I I told him, I said, our problem is we really don't put our focus where our focus needs to be and that's putting Christ first in our life. And when we don't do that, it seems like we want to focus on the little black dot. And he looked at me and he said, Pastor, uh, you said that you focus on the little black dot some too, right? And I said, absolutely. And I'm ashamed of it and I don't want to do it. But he said, what is your little black dot? I got to thinking about the things that stress me out, the things that bother me, the things that trouble me. And I thought, that's my little black dot. And I got to pray about them things. I gotta pray about my faith. I gotta pray about things that that come across my path that stress me out and pull me down. I gotta realize that God's bigger than the little black dot. I mean, imagine all this stuff around the little black dot is blessings. If you uh, let me let me share one of them. I'm completely off the sermon. I'm going to end shortly, but I've got I got you to understand what I'm trying to get across here today. How to make the best of the rest of your life? You've got to put Jesus Christ first. And if he's not first, then you're going to struggle in your life a lot more than the normal. Because when we go to focusing all the time on this little black dot, we don't see all these good things that happen. Judy Frazier, a precious lady that loves Jesus with all of her heart, spoke to me and she said, Ronnie, she said, there's something. And I want to share this with you, Judy. I I know you'll be fine with me doing this, I believe. She said, I want to share something that's helped me many years ago, a struggle I was going through, I realized that I needed, I needed to get my focus where my focus needed to be. At the end of the day, I, had, I got me a prayer journal, just a book, and it can be a book with just pages in it, and you can start and date each one, flip it over every day. At the end of my day, I, I took my journal, and I opened it up, and I started writing down in the journal each day that afternoon, blessings, the things of the day that was a blessing to me. And I listed each one of those blessings down. I didn't try to list my little black dot stuff. I listed my blessings of that day. 
you will be surprised how much is around the little black dot that are blessings when you go to focusing on that and get off of the negative and grab a hold of the positive that God said, really, there's more to be thankful for and blessed for than to be whining and walking around in the mully grubs all the time. Woe is me attitude. Oh, I can't, I, I want to tell you folks, we've got enough that tears us down and knocks us down and walks on us from time to time. But really, truly, we may have several things that do that, but I want to tell you that God said, I'm bigger than what's the matter. I can make a way when there is no way. Jesus wants the first moment of every day. He wants the first day of every week. You see, Jesus wants the first part of every paycheck. He wants to be first. The Lord Jesus Christ is not interested in being the first runner-up in your beauty contest. He's not interested in being vice president in your corporation. He's not interested in being second in command in your army. You see, He wants to be the king on the throne of your heart and not a co-partner in a duplex. But not only are we to seek the king, we ought to seek the kingdom. The kingdom of God ought to be the obsession of of our life. Now, what are you talking about and saying here, Pastor? I'm skipping through some of this, but we must desire it. We've got to desire the King. We've got to desire Him in our heart. We, we do what we really want to do. Right, Danny? We do what we want to do. We really do. We do what we really want to do, and we are what we really want to be. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You see, we've got to, we've got to desire it. We've got to understand what it means to, to really put Christ first. Well, I want to tell you something as I close with this, a statement that Will Rogers said. He said, you know what, in our life that we live, my friends, when Jesus Christ, we put Him first. Well, Will Rogers didn't say this. Bonnie Johnson saying this. When we put Christ first in our lives and He has number one position, we speak. that means we're going to talk to Him when we wake up every morning. That means every night when we go to bed, we're going to thank Him for the day and ask, Lord, if there's anything in my way, any sin in my way, forgive me, Father, and show me what it is so I can make it right. If we're going to, we should do that each and every day of our life, morning, noon, and night. I speak and I pray and I talk to the Savior. Well, and to do that, we wouldn't have no problem with some of these other things, the little darkness and the sin that comes in our life. Talking about a sin, Will Rogers said this. He said, we ought to live in such a way that we would not be ashamed to sell the family parrot to the town gossip. It is our job to serve God, and it is His job to supply us. He supplies our every need. Do you want to make the rest of your life the best of your life? You allow Jesus Christ to be your Lord. Put Him first. Live every moment for Him, and He will take care of the rest of our life. We must not focus on the little black dot and get our eyes. We must not focus on the little black dot, and we must get our eyes on the blessings of God each day. Let Christ live through you. And I'm saying this. A year or so ago, scared me to death. I mean, I was terrified. I was terrified because of health reasons for my wife. And my family was terrified. And doctors scared us to death. And some of you have been through some of this stuff and understand what I'm talking about. Some of you have even walked a lot harder. Gene is still walking in some of this right now. But, uh, but listen. Here's the thing. We both realized in our family that every day of life is important. Oh, it's not every day of life is not going to be the best, but every day that we wake up, that's when we've got to wake up and smell the roses and say, you know, Lord, I'm going to do the best I can do this day because it's the day you made. And now you tell me you want me to rejoice and be glad in it. I am glad in it. And I'm thankful for every moment of life that He gives us. Are you? How is it with you and the rest of your life?
How is it with you? Are you where you can put Jesus Christ at the front, first place in your life? I leave that with you this morning. If there's anybody here today that does not know that Jesus Christ lives in their heart, don't you leave here today without Him. Because He's here. His Spirit is here. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here. And if you feel that tugging, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a pulling. I had a lady tell me last week, she said, she said I thought my chest was going to come out of my body last week. Such a pulling. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit that was tugging on her heart's door. You know, let go and let God and let Him come and live in your heart. It's simple as, Marilyn, Father, forgive me of my sins and come live in my heart. My granddaughter, very precious to me, both my grandchildren, all three of my grandchildren, my grandson, my goodness, what, what do they mean to me? They mean everything. Madison come into our life several years ago, and my goodness, now she's almost 17 years old, and, and she's given her heart to Jesus, and it just absolutely has thrilled this old granddaddy to death. I want to tell you what, folks, your grandchildren are special to you. I, I come in the shop the other day, and Rhonda was doing their hair, and, and uh, my first one met me was Maggie, and man, I lied. She hugged me, and I, I, can't, I can't tell you how much that meant to me. It means everything to an old granddaddy. And then you get out and you walk outside your door, my friends. You've got to hear me just a minute. I'm going to quit this stuff, but then we're going to get down there. But I walk outside my door at the house, and my son and daughter-in-law and grandson uh, that's, um, I don't know, 18, 19 months or whatever he is, he lives behind us. And, and I walk out, and all of a sudden I hear somebody, they call out my name. And you know, I taught my grandchildren, Madison and Maggie, I taught them, Granddaddy. 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 And instead of Granddaddy, I walk out in my house and somebody has given me a different name and he says, Ding, ding! That's my boy. Well, I mean, what do you do with that? You know, I really don't want to be called Ding Ding. But it's okay. It's all right. It just lights up my world. I thank God for all three of my grandchildren. I thank God that my granddaughter Madison said yes. She said, Granddaddy, I'll know when it's time. I pressed her a little bit. She said, I'll know when it's time. She texted me in the middle of the night and said, Granddaddy, <laughs> I felt it, and it was real. And today, her old granddaddy gets to baptize her. And I thank God for it. And I just, I, I'd love right now, at this moment, for you to hang on to this. If you're here today, don't leave here without Jesus. Make it right. And I will tell you, if some of you need prayer, when this is over, I'll pray with you to tomorrow if it takes. I want you to know I love you and I appreciate you. And God loves you even better.